The foundation is that part of the structure that transfers the loads to the supporting soil in such a way that the resulting bearing pressures are under the acceptable limits. If the underlying soil has a good bearing capacity, most probably the soil's report will recommend spread footing to support the structure. In addition to the stability checks and the design for flexure, the spread footing needs to be designed for shear. But how do you calculate the shear capacity of a spread footing? What are the checks that are required by ACI 318? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to discuss the shear checks required by ACI 318 regarding the footing design. Let's get started. The ACI 318 requires two separate shear checks when you design uh, spread footing. One check recognizes that the footing may fail in shear as a wide beam along a critical section at a distance d from the column face. This is called the beam shear or one-way shear because it's similar to the shear that we check for a conventional beam. The second shear considers that the column may penetrate or punch the footing. This is called the punching shear or two-way shear. And it occurs around the column in a 3D plane at a distance d over 2 from the column face. The two checks include the calculation of the shear along the critical section, both in one-way shear or along the two-way shear, and then the calculation of the concrete shear strength and the comparison of both. Usually the shear strength is provided by the concrete only, otherwise special and expensive shear reinforcement would be necessary. In many cases, the footing thickness is controlled by the shear ratio. The first step is the calculation of the bearing pressures under the action of the factor loads for the footing. The one-way shear is then the volume of the bearing pressure under the color strip in this figure. For a concentrated load in a concentric footing, the bearing pressure is uniform, and this calculation is very simple. But if we consider now the case of biaxial footing in partial bedding, as in this case, then the shape of the volume of the resulting pressure is irregular, and the calculation of the volume, and therefore the calculation of the shear, is very complicated. In this particular case, this footing is in partial bedding, so this white triangle is not in contact with soil. Only the blue area is in contact with soil and is in biaxial bending. So we can visualize the shape of this volume under the footing. This is the zero pressure line and this is the maximum bearing corner. So it's an irregular plane underneath. And the volume of this solid is difficult to calculate by hand. The same occurs in the other direction of the shear. This is the zero line and the maximum bearing occurs at this corner. So we have maximum along this line as zero along this line. So the volume is difficult to calculate for this solid as well. Regarding the punching shear, Punching shear is produced directly by the forces and moments. For the simple case of a concentric footing with a downward load, the punching shear can easily be calculated as the volume of the bearing pressures on the critical area around the column. However, in the presence of overturning moments or biaxial bending, the calculation may become very cumbersome since the shear is no longer uniform and uh, needs to be calculated carefully along the critical section. This is similar to the case of an elevated flat plate supported by a column, where the unbalanced moments will produce a shear at the shear column junction. The factor shear stress on the critical section is the sum of the direct shear due to the vertical load plus the moment transfer. In this expression, gamma V is a fraction of the moment being transferred by shear, and J is the polar moment of inertia. For biaxial bending, a third term can be added for the moment in your direction. In this equation, BU and MU are involved, so it's more convenient to compare the punching shear in terms of stress rather than in terms of force or in terms of moment. For this reason, in as deep foundation, the punching shear will be shown in terms of uh, stress rather than force or moment. I have prepared an example in Adlib Foundation to illustrate the design of a typical spread footing. It's a 12 by 8 footing by 16 inches thick. The column is placed eccentrically on the footing, so we have a biaxial bending. We go to the loads tab. It's a simple footing, just with a concentrated load. 
If we go to the materials tab, here are the properties of the concrete and the reinforcing steel. Graphically, we can see the soil bearing pressures. These are the service load combinations, the controlling load, dead plus life. But if we go to the one-way shear, these loads are factored. So these are the factor load combinations. And the controlling load combination is 1.4 dead. Please note that this footing is in partial bearing. This white triangle is not in contact with soil. The program calculates the shear as the volume of this irregular solid under the footing, 39.9 kips. On the other side, 51.6 kips. These shear forces are acting along these critical lines at a distance d from the column face in this direction. In the other direction is 25.5 kips as the volume of this uh, solid under the footing. And in the other side is 28.7. If we go to the condensed tab, we can see a detailed set of calculations. We scroll down to the one-way shear calculation here. Here are the uh, shears that we just saw graphically. One-way shear in X and one-way shear in C in minus and plus sides. The understrength fee factor for shear is 0.75 according to the ACI and the one-way shear strength in one direction is 99.6 in the other direction is 140.5 kips. If we compare the factor shears versus the design strength the design ratio is 0.52 so the design is acceptable. If we go back to the graph tab click on the punching tab. Here we can see graphically the calculation of the punching shear. The punching shear is calculated along this line around the column at a distance d over 2. So the maximum punching shear stress is 91.8 psi. If we go to the condensed tab, here in the punching shear calculation, we can see here the unbalanced uh, moment factor in one direction and in the other. Here is the stress due to the actual load. And here is the stress due to the moments in both directions. So the maximum shear stress is 91.8 PSI. Here is the calculation of the punching shear design strength according to the ACI. The design shear strength is 164 PSI versus 91.8 PSI. So the design is acceptable. The punching shear ratio is 0.56. If we go to the detail tab, we can see here a more detailed set of calculations. We scroll down to the one-way shear calculations. We can see here all the formulas step by step with all the results and the ratios. We scroll down to the punching shear calculations. Here we can see all the exposed formulas with the references to the ACI code and finally the design ratios. As you can see it's easy to do the shear design checks per ACI in ASDIP foundation the design can be completed quickly, that otherwise would be very time consuming. With this, we conclude the presentation on the design checks for shear in spread footing. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.